Mm. If I walk in a room full of people like us, it's weird. Mm. When I walk in a room in Paris, Fashion Week, it's not. Mm. When I walk in a room in LA uh, and it's a bunch of film people and white people, it's not. The who's giving me the problems and questioning me the most is my own people. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. I got to watch, watch my figure. You know, it's a lot of calories in these drinks. That's just kind of, Oh, you it's know? Tito's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Tito's. Okay. Well, then I got to watch my... Uh, <laughs> don't You're forget I rap, nigga, bro. Man. Come on, man. I think it's, it's not It's shit. not Tito's. It's, 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 it's actually tequila. But we ain't going to drink. We'll have a sober conversation, man. Yeah, yeah. Yo, you a Gemini? Yeah, yeah. Are you a Gemini too? I remember that's one thing I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gemini's for each other, but one thing about Gemini's, we I feel like we so misunderstood. Yeah, hundred percent. But we are weird though. To me, it's like so clear mm. in my mind, like how to operate, but like it'd be to complex else. to everybody else. Mm. I think it's like we complex because details matter, mm. and people don't realize like with us, it's about details. So if you don't, if you look at everything too general. You won't understand. Mm. Yeah. Let's get to this, man. You ready? Oh, yeah. uh, you want to put the mic down a little bit? Probably can't see your face. Oh, okay. Can you hear me good, though? Yeah, we can hear you, though. All right, bet. Yeah, I got you, man. That's the details, and that's the Gemini shit. <laughs> I'm probably, yeah, I feel you. Let's get it popping. Yo, what's popping? You know what time it is? Your boy J Hill, Mr. J Hill Podcast. Um, whew. This next uh, guest I got is special. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to paint a picture real quick. I'm going to tell you why he's so special. A couple years back, I was doing my podcast, Gemini Scorpio Podcast, with me and my lady. And um, it's like, yo, you want to pull up? I'm like, bet. Uh, that was dope for me because IDK, if you know IDK, you know he's like a big deal. And to that don't know, you might have been sleeping under a brick, whatever the case may be. But especially in my area, we know who IDK is. He's one of the people that put the DMV area. I don't represent the DMV. I'm from Baltimore. But for out-of-towners and for the conversation sake, he, put, he helped put the DMV on a high level. Like, I mean, not just one of the artists that was buzzing in the area, but he was one of the first ones to get, like, major deals have connection with like major people you feel me so like we don't get a lot of those people often so he hit me like yo i'm trying to pull up cool so i'm like yo uh matter of fact idk is in the building we're gonna, <laughs> we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna get it to it together so like yeah. i wanted to clear the room and i was i'm not gonna lie to you i was like contemplating on bringing this up because i'm like i don't want to be weird but nah, i wouldn't be me if i didn't bring it up because i probably like i wanted to know so idk pulls up to the to podcast he's like bro i mean i could talk shit behind the camera but like i don't want to get on i don't want people to know it's me mm. so me i'm like i'm i'm cool i'm growing at the time but i'm still me so i'm like as much as i it would be dope i'm like nah bro because if you're gonna get on you gotta get on niggas gotta know it's you Mm-hmm. So f- 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 you might not even know, but that was hard for me to say no. Like, nah, bro, like, if you're going if you gonna come and be in the audience, be in the audience. But if mm-hmm. you're going to come and get on, get on. Yeah. So he's like, all right, bet I was just being in the audience. So bet. So he came, showed up, shit was fire. I'm like, damn, IDK just pulled up to my crib. I'm recording on my yeah. crib. So this is where this shit come at. I hit this nigga in the DM. Y'all know me. I'm the deep, bro. I'm, I miss the DM. I play the DMs. You feel me? Hit the nigga in the DM like, yo. I would love to get an interview with you. This nigga say, you know the people at Warner? Do I know the people at Warner? <laughs> it's that, nigga, you just pulled up to my fucking crib. Yeah, 100%. Nah, but see, that's the, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Talk to this me. is it's something that people got to understand with me, bro. At the end of the day, like, I could like something. I could, the reason why I came to your podcast is I was a fan. Mm. I saw something as a fan, but sometimes because of what I do, it's hard to just experience something as a fan mm. because everybody want to do something with me, and 
I'm very particular. The reason why I get the shit that I get and do the things I do is because everything got to make sense at the right time. Mm. So I'm not one a person to just do shit just because it's there. And you know, I, I also if I'm doing something, I like to make sure there's energy behind me. Like I drop a song, my album's about to come out. Fans, everybody's waiting for me. Like when this video, when this podcast come out, all my people's is watching it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Other as opposed to. Let me just do it just to do it. You right. get what I'm saying? So I think it's that's the misunderstanding that a lot of people yeah. have. Like, I'm strategic with how I do things. And if I said, um, do you know people at Warner? The reason why I said that is because if you hit them up, the time when I am doing press, they're going to reach out to make sure that it gets done. Mm. If you rely on me, I'm going to forget. Mm. I know how I am. It's a lot of different things going on at, at any given moment. Right. You know, so... So doing a, and I love these conversations because I was just telling you, God, like, I'm able to because I'm so close to, you know, still the bottom. Like I'm having success, but I'm still like close to it. I could have these fan conversations. Yeah. Right. And I, um, for me, I understand it because like, shit, it be times where niggas ask me and I don't respond, I and I gotta be real. You feel me? So people gonna do that to me. But even there, right, taking myself back then. I don't have no connects with no 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 label. Why not? Like connect me with them. Oh, I didn't know that though. Is mm-hmm. that is that what happened? You ain't respond. What'd you, what'd you respond? Oh, I yeah, said see, nah, bro. Can't that and that's something people can't take personally mm-hmm. either, bro. Like if I don't respond, I was actually about to post something today on my IG. It's funny you, you said that on the way to the airport. I was gonna post something saying, or the way from the airport here, I was gonna post something saying like with me. Just because it says seen mm-hmm. on Instagram does not mean I read, especially if you send me a long message. Mm. I just be seeing words. And if at that moment I can't process everything that's going on because I'm doing a bunch of other stuff, I may see that joint. The reason why I don't I don't like to look at shit, like say someone texts me, is because I want to see that it's unread so I can go back to it later. It might be two, three days later. I got to deal with that with other artists. And the problem is that like, I learned because of how I know how I feel about it. I realized sometimes you just got to hit a nigga up again. Mm. You can't even be on no like, oh, it's too cool, or this nigga tried to do this to me. Nah, that's not. I, oh, I hit you I, up again a couple of times. Oh, you did? Yeah. And then I didn't see it? Or yeah, I responded? You didn't respond. I don't know, bro. I, I genuinely do not remember, bro. I took it personal. Mm. And, I, and I bring that up because like personally for me, one, but two, you're similar. In what sense? Taking it personal. Let's take it back. Yeah. Was it 2018? See. Yeah. You wasn't chosen to be on the double XL uh freshman cover. Right. You took that very personal. Uh, yeah, but that but to be honest with you, I didn't really take it personal. It was just like I knew Trippy Red didn't do a freestyle and I was like, shit, I'm gonna just make a verse about it mm. and show people why I should have been on it. Mm. I really didn't take it personal. You know what's funny? The day I I, found, I knew before it ever came out, mm-hmm. you already know that it's who's gonna be chosen, and that's not you. I bought a my first car in seven years. I was at the BMW dealership. I was buying my car, and I was like, I mean, I ain't get double XL, but niggas is moving. <laughs> I got this nigga. I'm about to pull up. Like mm-hmm. I was back home too. So for me, I didn't take it. I took it personal in the sense of damn. I wish I got it. Mm-hmm. But not the what I did was not really a per. It was just like, nah, I want to show niggas, all right, I ain't on it, but this is what it is. And they called me the next year after that. Mm. Yeah. I say that because I feel like sometimes, depending on the person, especially for me, sometimes taking it personal is the, the fuel to your success. I mean, that too, yeah. I think, but the real fuel to my success is gratitude, bro. Mm. Realizing like where I'm at and what I want. And what I what I can do to accomplish what I want, and seeing that shit happen, that's my. Are you saying that now because you've grown so much? Because it's so easy to have hindsight bias, right? Like to right. say, look back on something. But I'm talking in the process, in the beginning of IDK, no, JID. Hell I'm, no. I'm talking yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a hundred percent. It's always was, been like that. No, no, no. In the beginning, it's something that I, that's part of being a man. No, you we just mm-hmm. grow into that kind right. of shit, and some of us never will, and some of us will remain. In the same spot we was when we was 25, 24, 23. Part of my growth, and because of what I've been through, because I got to go to Sierra Leone and see what it's like in Africa, in a third world country, uh, uh, Sierra Leone, and then see what prison was like and being in that situation where you can't, 
your whole world is one building. Mm. The whole world that we have that we could go out and see is responding to one building. Being able to see all that shit, I realize gratitude. Uh, I realize how to really look at gratitude and, and understand it and appreciate it. And gratitude is the antidote for almost any problem you could ever have. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say like, so I grew into like, all right, before it used to be like, I used to be in competition with every rapper. Yeah. To me, that's the dumbest shit ever because music is so subjective. I'm in my own lane. I'm in competition with myself carving my own lane. And I see other niggas do their thing and I'm down to support it if I fuck with it. Or sometimes I don't even be liking a nigga's song, but I'll post the shit just because I know that that helps whatever they got going on and I support what they doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's about growth, bro. So I really don't even remember that. That's mm-hmm. the crazy part about it. So for you, you, you took it personal. I don't even remember that Not shit. Right. So I wasn't even thinking of it to make it a personal thing. I just literally, at that moment, Whatever happened, I just couldn't respond or I didn't respond, you know? Nah, nah for me, it's like, I want to say I don't care. I think being a man, I, I hold uh, I hold this very, like, dear, near and dear to my heart, like, mm-hmm. being this man. So many things come with it. Like, people take things personal when, like, they do fuck shit. Mm-hmm. Or, like, they take it personal and they don't say nothing. Like, me, I feel like being a man, a part of being a man is communicating even when it's, when it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, I told myself, like, first of all, I'm not going to deny the interview because I felt the way, but this mm-hmm. is a great time to have a conversation about it. Like, if yeah. anything, this is a great time to be like, yo, what's up, man? I'm Jay, man. I ain't like that shit. Yeah, and you, I- You feel me like- I'm, I'm glad you did that because most people don't do that. And then there's other thing that you always got to remember, and this is for everybody, everybody watching this shit. Yo, me professionally and mm-hmm. me personally are two different things. That's a fact. On a personal level, I will fuck with you. I'll pull up to your crib, watch this podcast, da, da, da. Me professionally, there's a lot more red tape in how I do that and why I do that and when I do that. That's hard. And you cannot mix those two up because if I'm humble enough to come to your crib and watch that podcast, you got to say to yourself, like, damn, this nigga genuinely does fuck with me. Because mm. think about it like this. I'm not coming there to get promotion from what you got going on and get to your audience and all that. I liked what you were doing. I saw what you was doing. I took the time to come to... Niggas don't even do shit nah, like fact, that. I think I ain't going to lie to you. In my mind... I was like, I had this one girl on that. She was fire. You feel me? I'm like, man, he probably tried to pull up to get her or something like that. Let me tell you something with me and, <laughs> Am and I, women. I'm too real. My bad. My no, bad. No, no, no. But it's funny. What's funny is, <clears throat> let me, it's funny is, that's a lot for one girl. Mm. Like it's not about well, some the girl. niggas would do a whole lot for one girl. Not me. Like oh, yeah. it's a I lot of women in this world, bro. Like I since and high you pulled school, up heavy with the. With the motherfucking Maybach too, like I'm like, you want somebody can, to can see? Can I be it. honest? That was my only car. So <laughs> I, my other car was on the West Coast. Well, so. That was crazy though. Yeah, first yeah. Of all, pull up. That was crazy. Yeah, that but but real shit though. Like I think that's the another way. That's why I'm learning with other artists. Like you really can't take certain shit personal because mm. some niggas really just be like so out of it, so gone, and then balancing personal life, and then the way that this shit is with us. I might not be in a mood. I might be in a mood to come here right this moment, and then five minutes before I get here, some shit go down yeah. where I'm not in a mood no more. And I got to either power through it and not disrespect your time, or I got to see, damn, I've been powering through everything for the past month or two months, and I've been just putting everything aside, my mental health and my da 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 This is the one time. joint I got to really just say I can't do this. Mm. But as if I'm real, I'll tell you and I'll apologize to you. I didn't even know that was an issue. So to That's me, what, I was like, you know what I mean? I want to say it's an issue. Did I, I left early though? Yeah, but it, even that wasn't like I thought. I, I thought I stayed for that joint. I'm pretty you, sure I stayed. You, you think the whole way through? Because I remember there was like I rem, now I remember there was a girl that yeah, was like, that was oh my god, didn't she have like a boyfriend or something? Bro, don't do that on my podcast. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my bad. So it was, it was my, uh, it was my, um, yo, we gonna block this out. It was okay. my, Okay. And I think I went to do something and I came back and he was gone or whatever. And they like, yo, bro, Shorty just was wilding for IDK. I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? Did she like she cry like, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like she was on some like some I know you can't say it, but she was on some groupy shit. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like that's probably regular for you. That's a fan. Like you get fans all every day. But for me, I'm like, bro, what the f-? <laughs> And then it was my but what, give me a time stamp. He was right there at the same time? He was my cameraman. So he was there? Yes. And he saw that happen? Yes. Damn. 
<laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like I remember. Because I hit you to apologize. Like yo, what? Because that's the worst. That's the last thing I want. I was like, yo, tripping. this man can't even come and chill. You gotta God, apologize man. to your man, nigga. That's who's gonna feel it. <laughs> to me, I was like, that's it's lit. Regular. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not regular. Because I remember nobody gave a fuck about anything I had to do. Mm. I was struggling to get people's attention. So even then, bruh, no, no, way. not then. Yeah, but like I'm saying, tell. before that, a lot of my career, most of it was trying to figure this shit out. Mm. So whenever anybody like even notices me, I never expected one and two I'm always I always I'm always flattered by that. So hold up. I want to go back. Yeah. Cuz you ain't about to just growth talk me to death. <laughs> I need to go back to IDK when I was struggling to get people to they understand mm-hmm. they would see the movement, right? Yeah. It's no way you, you you know you get successful and it's like man you lose sight of that because again sometimes that be the very much fuel that that's gonna keep you going because it's like man nah these niggas ain't get it I'm gonna keep stepping on that neck every of course, single time of course time. of course yeah but then you know when reason. did it change then when when did you learn and and was it the, was it when you got arrested that um that uh you can't be like that no more no nah because I I was arrested before I really started rapping. So rap came after prison. Mm. Um, For me, it was more like, I realized it was like depressing when you would like kind of find, like compare shit to other people's stuff Mm. or just kind of like realize, like dwell on things you can't fully control. And then I felt more power in just literally just saying, how can I be a better version of myself? So, yeah, there's even to this day there's still like things where like I might be saying, Yo, I'm gonna do this and people are like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I gotta like show them like, nah, nigga, like yeah. we, Don't we miss really, the ride. We, we, we really designing Mercedes Benzes and sneakers and all this shit. Like we really like no, we really taking Lon Vaughn and making a racing suit and da 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 like, you know, I still gotta do that and that more so is the fuel, but it's not aimed at a de- particular person really is it's more so at these corporations and these companies that that um ain't trying to support things that are really important you know what i mean mm. it's everything i'm doing especially now comes from the heart bro so if it ain't from the heart it ain't gonna happen and that's what fuels all of this shit mm. for me the heart yeah the heart like real shit Okay. No, I like that. Uh, and, and especially how you worded it because it's definitely these corporations. Yeah, 100%. I think I might just hate everybody. For real? Well, nobody. That's my, but that's, yeah. it might sound like some hate and shit, yeah. but that's really what fuels me. Like, I got fired from a corporation back home, DTLR. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Oh, but, for like, real? Yeah. I think I seen um, Joe Button talk about this. He was like, you got to go through those things. Because mm-hmm. that would really show you, like, but I I love it. I might talk about it like I hate it, but, like, I love it because, like, yeah, because one of them said, F- all you niggas that didn't <laughs> yeah. believe. When yeah, nigga Drake yeah. said, like, Nigga went and bought a house when he could have bought a verse. Niggas dumb as f- I felt that mm-hmm. shit when he said that. Like, you niggas dumb. Yeah, you could have yeah, got a yeah, J. Hill interview, nigga. Like, yeah, f- yeah, like yeah. that's how I feel. might sound cocky now, but yeah, we, we gonna see. Yeah, Take this yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but no, So, I'm curious to know, like, coming from the heart, right? Such a special place. Um, and there's a lot of love there, right? The heart, of course. How do you stay motivated? And as cliche or... or uh, crazy as that may sound as that question is that's a real thing because again sometimes those that that pain that hurt that hunger help you stay motivated and help you get creative and innovative and we've seen you've been innovative since the beginning so it's funny that as you say that i I never questioned myself about that and now i see what it is how i stay motivated is simple there's so many problems in this world bro that there will never ever be a period where there's not a problem, especially when it comes to mm-hmm. black people and people of color. I'm motivated by doing what I can to fix those problems. Mm. So it's really that. It's really I do everything I do for that. Mm. Not to be the greatest rapper of all time. My my goal is to be the first rapper or a rapper to win a Nobel Prize. Mm. That's and so I work backwards from that. But you got to think about what a Nobel Prize even is and what it means. And it's all about bringing change to the world in a positive light. So if that's what my 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 main goal is, everything I'm doing is falling under that umbrella. Mm. And there will never be a time in this lifetime where there's not a problem that a nigga can't try to fix. Mm. That's really what it is. That's my motivation. It's not these rap niggas. It's not trying to rap better than this nigga, sell more records than that nigga. I don't give a f- 
about none of that shit, nigga. I'm, I got a great lifestyle, amazing. I got three properties. I'm working on more. I got, I dream come true making Nikes, doing all of this other stuff that's about to happen. You know, I don't even do the fashion shit on purpose. Like they re- like they reach out to me. They that's like the what I got going on. You see, I I'm just being like, real. I, I don't like. I'm not one of them niggas who hit my publicist. Make sure I'm at this show. And hell no. It's like this is really like people either I fuck with the brand and I'm a fan of it, or they my friends. Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines. Man, he's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses. Right. He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me. This is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they like how I, how I dress because, you know, you know niggas from DMV area, you know how niggas get down when it comes to clothes and shit. So they like that, and they just connect with me mm. because of that and what I believe in and what I stand for. It's a lot of people that's really trying to be in them rooms, and they're trying hard and then still not getting it. And it's like it's because you're trying, bro. You mm. really just really should just don't do that. Just do you. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If that's your lane, that's your lane. Mm. Like let's talk about that too. Like it's a lot of rappers that be trying to be fly and shit. Like trying to super be in fashion. That shit don't even look right. They don't even match the music. You got a lot like, of niggas that be looking weird out here. You gotta do it. What it is like? Like what are you? Who are you? What mm. do you want to be remembered for? And then work from that. Stop trying to look at other niggas what they doing and this and that. There. Everybody always. The big question everybody got for me is, how does he get everything he gets? Who's his manager? Who that? I gotta manage myself. Mm. I got a team that that works with me and helps me do that. This is all from my mind and the things that I I want to accomplish. And again, it comes from the heart. I'm not doing this shit for the same reason y'all doing it. You know? No, like I say, I'm really like not <laughs> one of them niggas. For me, like it's different over here. Nah, I'm I real. Feel it. No, I understand real. it. And um, but moving like that yeah. in such a Let's be real, like a weird industry. That's not the industry. Like you said, so many people who are trying hard to be something that they're not, essentially. Mm-hmm. Right? They want to put on this image for everybody else. And you're like, you're like the one of the few that's not doing that. Yeah. Cause people, I'm really, oh, go ahead. people gotta like adjust to that different or react to it differently. And I'm pretty sure you feel it every time you walk in the room. Yeah, not maybe not every time, because it depends on what room I'm walking in. Mm-hmm. If I walk in a room full of people like us, it's weird. Mm. When I walk in a room in Paris, Fashion Week, it's not. Mm. When I walk in a room in L.A. Uh, and it's a bunch of film people and white people, it's not. The niggas who's giving me the problems and questioning me the most is my own people. Heck. Everybody else get it. So that's why it's like, you know, again, like, bro, like, I'm really like, what I do is for real. Like, I'm really about this shit. Like, and I'm not like, one of them niggas that I think I'm too cool for nobody and none of that shit. It's literally depends on what you ask of me at that moment and what is this a personal thing or is this a professional thing? Mm. In professional, I separate from personal. But if you have my number, do you have my number? No, I don't got your number. You should get my number. You can sure. always call me. Oh, I'm sure. always going to answer or oh, call yeah. you back. Appreciate but that's, every, that's how I am mm. personally. Now, if a nigga pressing me to go da 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 you know, let me... Hey, what's up with them shoes? What's da, 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 da. That's different. Like, if everybody who received a pair of my shoes worked with me to some capacity, you know, or it's a, a friend of mine from a long time ago that we've done things back in the day, whatever. So if it's like when it's asking for things that I'm doing pers- and that's not personal, it's a little bit harder, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it got to make sense, too. Like, I'm, got to. I'm not sitting up here as if I don't understand that, right? But, nah, for sure. Like, even like I, um, I was telling my friend, and I fuck with him. And he was like talking about the podcast and shit. And I'm like, bro, 
please don't ask for no interview. Yeah. You feel I know me? Because like mean. I don't I don't want to say no. Yeah. But you gotta understand that like a lot, I'm gonna keep it hundred with you, candid as hell. A lot of what I'm doing right now for the sake of it is really for the look. 100%. It's people that I don't even care to interview that mm -hmm. I'm gonna interview mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. single time mm -hmm. for now. Mm -hmm. Because I know I gotta build this to a place where I can just bring my homie on. Right. I gotta build this to a place where I could just go outside and get the homeless dude on the street. And just because his story is lit, people gonna listen. 100%. But I ain't there yet. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like my homies, they just see something good and like, yo, you should bring me on a podcast. Why? 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 Nah, why? and that's like, the thing. Like, in me, bro, if I ever call you, it's gonna make sense. Mm. I always think about, before I think about what I get out of it, how can I offer you something? Talk to me. What Come do on. I have to offer you? And that's the reason why people answer my calls. Because I don't be calling niggas like, hey, better that. Asking for ridiculous shit that don't even make sense. Mm. Never that. And I'll never do that. And and that's that's the thing. Like, that goes a long way with a lot of people. You know, even right. with me. Like, if I know that a nigga going, there's a lot of people that know not to ask me for a feature. It don't make sense. Mm. It's niggas that are asking me. And then there's niggas that are ask me and say how much. And you know what I do? If it's somebody that's personally a friend of mine, I still char I would still charge them, but it would be a donation to something that I'm trying to build mm -hmm. that's going to better people of color and, and black people. That's usually how I, that's my new way of doing shit now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I'm not in a place where I'm just going to do shit. Like, for instance, for this album, I wanted Hove on my album. Now, that's a crazy thing to ask for, kind of. But I thought about it really deeply, and I was like, yo, I'm young. I be talking some of the same shit he talking, but I'm just a younger version of that. Um, he hasn't done shit with a lot of younger people. Lenny and Guru all co-sign me and fuck with me and think that it makes sense. So, shit, I'll go for it. But if it was just me two years ago, there is no way I would even think about that. Mm. Wait, did you get the J feature? I didn't get it. Okay. I didn't get it. I'm, Next I'm, time. I mean, you know, it's still, you know. I mean, I think I got really far in the process, and um, and I know that he does fuck with me, so you know, that's that's important. You know what I mean? That's hard. That's the first step, and a lot of my stuff happens like that. The Nike shit, same shit. It's like took five years to really get that, but I built and built and built to the point where it was just undeniable. We got to do this. Mm, that's you know hard. what I mean? You say you ain't into fashion, but it looked like it. <laughs> like it well, so like it. I say fashion and style is two different things. I like style. Fashion is the industry. That's like the, I want to be at the show, front row, like, because it's going to put me in this conversation and that. I don't do that. Mm. That's organic. I don't have no, like, fashion PR and none of that shit. Like, I literally just do what, like, for instance, I was, my first real fashion week in Paris, I I was going there for, for Dave Chappelle. So there was this thing that I was, working on a, a album um, and I needed black, not for me, but for somebody else executive producing it. I needed a black star feature from Kweli and, and uh, most, and they were gonna be in Paris. And then Dave was in Paris too. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just go out there. And then it was like, oh wait, it's fashion week. So I knew Kim Jones, he's the creative. Um, you wild, uh, man. Art, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep artistic going. director. All the clickbait, keep going, keep going. <laughs> He's the artistic director of um, Fendi Women's and um, Dior Men's. So I know I've been supposed to link up with him. I did the cover of ID Magazine, and and then I got a Maybach, and then he said, welcome to the family. So we got cool because of that. I'm going to keep, every time you say somebody's name, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So crazy. then, nah, so then, boom, then, um, so I was, I was going to Paris, and I was like, yo, I think I'm going to be in Paris finally. You're going to be there? And he was like, yeah, it would be great to meet you. By the way, you should come to my show, which is the Dior show. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Got got gave him the information. Next thing you know, bro, all these Dior people hit me. I'm getting car service to Sheesh. go get dressed. We looking at all the Travis Scott stuff before it came out. I'm like literally like, and then that turned into other people wanting me to come to their shows and all that stuff. So it was organic. It wasn't no like trying to do that shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I like style, like dressing. That's the art. Fashion is the industry. Fashion is the people who study this shit, really live this shit. That's like a YouTuber being like, yo, I'm a rapper now. It's like, I mean, you could rap maybe, but like, you really about this for real? You're a nice. YouTuber. How could you be both? Because you got to, yes, you can do both, but you have to put so much energy into one of these things that you cannot do these both of these things equally. Sheesh. 
You know, you gotta choose almost, right? Yeah. I was, it's funny. I was talking to my dog uh, David Shantz. Well, I wasn't talking to him. He was actually talking to the dude Nehemiah Davis, right? Neo, like, yo, um, Dave, I want, I want my podcast to be like yours. Like, how can I skip the steps? I know you, so I should be able to skip the steps. And he was like, it start with first making your audience believe, right? So right now, I mean, Neo is big for like event spaces. That's what he put on his gram. Like, mm. he's lit. That he's that event space guy. And he like, right now, I don't see you as a podcaster. It like you're just doing it. And like, mm. like you said, it's like you could say you, you see so many YouTubers, particularly because I interview a few of them, and I ask them the same. Like you, you see YouTube on their page. Like you see that they're a YouTuber, but you see rap here and there. Mm. It's like, especially like the little video vixens or the or the pretty chicks, Instagram chicks. Mm -hmm. Like they become rappers and shit. You see all these model pictures because that's what making the money. Yeah. But when it comes to the rap, it's like it's sporadically. But nah, if you really into it, you yeah. gotta make me and, a believer. And so that's why I say I can never put myself in a conversation of. I'm a fashion person because there's people that put their blood, sweat, and tears and everything they had into this. They loved this shit since they was little. They may have went to school. They may have not. They've watched every documentary you can about this creative director, that person, that person. Those are the people who are in fashion, bro. Mm. I'm not in fashion. Like, I just like certain shit. You know what I mean? Like, But you can make a I transition, rap. though. I wouldn't. Because let's say... I feel like I see this influence, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, like Kanye West. Yeah. I feel like I see Kanye West in you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, you know, and, and shout out to him, that's a person that I consider like a mentor, and I've spent time with him and had conversations with him. But, like, in all reality, though, it's like he's a, he's a, he's one of the very few examples. We got Pharrell, we got him, and we got ASAP Rocky. Mm. Those are the two, the three main people who we can, who are even examples of anything that I'm doing in that world. But see, the difference is they really, really like wanted to study and learn that shit. Mm. I just like dressing up and wearing cool shit. And I like that because I used to get made fun of when I was a kid from middle school down before that. And I remember high school, I said, I will never be made fun of for not dressing good ever again for the rest of my life. I remember it was this, it was the summer going into um, high school, from middle school to high school. I was going to Duval High School, and I was thinking about all the shit that I was going to do to never, ever have that problem. So this is a result of that. Mm. That comes from a real place. You see what I'm saying? Feeling depressed coming to school because I don't know if I'm going to get made fun of real bad today or whatever the case may be. That's why I started dressing nice, and I love the feeling of that, and I love people appreciating me because of that. That's why I do that shit. But the fashion industry and all that stuff, that's for the professional people who, I put my blood and sweat and tears into rap music. Mm. That's why I put my blood, sweat, and tears into. The same way Kim Jones put his blood, sweat, and tears into fashion. Right. So I could never come in there and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm up there with you on fashion. Nah, that's, to me that's disrespect. Mm. You know what I mean? If I do decide to take off two, three, four, five years, and then focus on fashion for real, then maybe I'll have a different conversation with you, but I'm not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't care about it that much. You know? I love that. It's so, it's damn, it's so much to unpack in that alone. Yeah. Like, even the fact that, like, what we see the Nike collab, mm -hmm. the uh, Lon Vaughn, what is it? How I pronounce it? I don't even know. Lon Vaughn. I didn't know yeah. at first. Like, I don't even own nothing Lon Vaughn. I, it's <laughs> la a lot of people say Lambin, but it's Lon Vaughn. Lon Vaughn, yeah. the Lon Vaughn connect lab. We see, um, we see what the fashion, or let's go back. We see what the pain brought, right? They say you got to get the diamond out the dirt, right? Mm -hmm. The diamond is, is is in the dirt, and like that, your fashion sense, or your sense of fashion came from people teasing you. Yeah, 100%. and we started the conversation off with like just that motivation, like letting the letting the hate, letting the naysayers be the fuel to the fire, right? The mm -hmm. fuel in the engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a right. fuel to. The fashion would have got you, would eventually got you here. Right, and and that's why I say a period of my life is where that changed, and I would stopped using that as fuel. But that was the initial fuel that made me who I am, 100%. So let me ask you this then. That made IDK. Now that it changed, have you seen a difference in your artistry when it comes to the music? And And, and if you did see it, was it something ever at a time where it was frustrating? Um, the change, I definitely see a change. I'm able to tap into the divine spirit and really make my music based off of that now. Before, it used to be thoughts, too much thinking, 
overthinking, trying to be technical with everything. Now it's such a feeling that people is feeling me for real. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, what was the second part of the I question? Was, I, basically, I was asking whatever change it was, was it ever frustrating at a point? Did you ever feel like people didn't get it? Do you feel like you could tap into <laughs> the divine and, and it's like people ain't really feeling it? Perfect example. You know how Kanye West, that's since we was on that, right? Mm -hmm. Kanye West, it's every rapper that gets money. Every what Lil Wayne, anybody you could think of. Mm hmm they come out, they talk about the trenches because that's what their experience is, right? Mm -hmm. But once they start getting money, they talk about different things. And we like, man, I miss the old uh, Kanye. I miss the old this person, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like because they're in a different place. And I'm wondering if you ever heard that from your fans or- Of course. If you, have, you, have, have, that, have you felt that and felt a little uncomfortable and want to go back to the nah, old Nah, fuck kid? that. I'll never go back to nothing old because mm. the, the, the fans are judging you off of what they connected to and why they connected to that, and they'll never ever be able to let that go because they have personal experiences that you would never know that have that are associated with that connection. For me, I'm a human. I'm growing. Mm. And again, back to this gratitude thing, there's no way I could sit in my th uh, three three floor, 4,000 square foot, seven bedroom, five full bathroom, a condo and be looking at my life like damn I should have stayed what I was or I, no man it's gratitude I'm ex I'm extremely happy that I'm even here mm. they let me in like I'm I'm not like multi platinum artist yet or none of that but also I still got tomorrow mm. you know what I'm saying so for today where I'm at and still to have tomorrow god willing psh, there's nothing that could really make me feel like. Now, if I was like broke, 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 and I didn't have like shit, and I didn't, tomorrow wasn't promising, which I've been in, then that's like a little bit, you know, scary, I guess. Mm. But even in that, when you go back to gratitude, it's like, oh, but then I got a roof over my head, and I got food, and I got clean water. There are people that don't got that. So it's like the gratitude, man. Like, there's nothing. I'm telling you, gratitude is the antidote for any problem if you really know how to master that. <clears throat> I'm on, I'm, hey, I'm feeling it. Like, yeah. you're absolutely right. Even, like, I was having a conversation with my girl um, because sometimes it, things do go wrong. Same right? girl from the... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'm having a um, conversation with her recently, and, you know, things going on. I'm like, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. It will be fools to 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 be sad about anything that's going on. Yeah. Look at where we at right exactly. now. Exactly, that's it. Like, no cap. Like, I knew yeah. it might be hard, but... This ain't what it was. Yeah. Like, so that's what I'm I get saying. it. When I say I get it, oh my, it gave me chills when you said it. Because, yeah. like, gratitude is, it, we, which, that's something that you got to learn how to tap into. For you sure. You got to learn how to tap you into. You know that. what to, true happiness really is, right? It's very simple. All true happiness is, is having something to look forward to. Mm. And my nigga, I was just telling them on my way here, I'm single. I be in that crib by myself. I put my alarm on so I'm comfortable. I know everything's straight. You know what I'm saying? And I just go and lay down. I'm like, nigga, this is me. Right. Come on, man. Look like I got, I could look forward to waking up tomorrow. I don't, I don't sleep very well. Not because I have trouble really sleeping. I got trouble staying asleep. Cause when that sun come up, I can't wait to see what's in store for my day today. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait to see what text message, who, 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 which legendary artist that I always love is going to respond or or hit me on a DM or ask me to get on a song or where am I flying tomorrow or what brand wants to do a deal with me or you know it's like you enjoying damn, life right now. I'm really enjoying life. Bro. So going back to Drake, right? Drake say, uh, uh, more money, more problems. Fuck it, bring on the problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. One of my favorite <laughs> yeah, yeah. songs because as you know, right? Like niggas been in the trenches. Niggas been in some hard times, yeah. right? You, we gonna talk about a pro you had made a project about your man's um, that came from the project in DC, mm -hmm. right? Um, what it was called? Uh, Simple, S Simple City, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In DC, mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? You know what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this then, since you talk about the condo, happy to be life. Mm -hmm. Drake say more money's more problems. Fuck it, bring on the problems. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? Do you feel like it's better on this side with the money than being happy on the side without the money? If I'm being quite honest with you, hell yeah. I'm with you. Because money, I, man, people be saying money ain't everything, and I'm not saying it. it's everything. You could be unhappy with money, but I think it's easier to be happy with money because you ain't got to worry about certain shit. 
Mm. There's like certain survival shit that if you X that out of your life, you're able to live in a certain level of comfort. Mm. And and the way that I'm thinking too, I don't want to throw nobody off. The gratitude for me is easier to tap into because financially I'm in a decent place. Bro, it, it's, as crazy as this conversation right here might sound to people, it's real because even I was talking to somebody and he was saying like, you know, they're able to like go to therapy and things like that, mm-hmm. but they're able to do that because yeah, it's other things they don't have to worry about. Yeah, when well, you yeah. I struggle about how you gonna pay rent, what I'm gonna eat, man, I got this, how the f- I'm gonna do that, I'm trying to do this. Mm-hmm. I ain't worried about paying for no f- therapist. That's right. like that's the last thing on my mind. Right, right, but when right. you get the money and you get and you been su- a little successful, it's like, you know what, let me go get my life together. Yeah. Let me let me go talk to somebody. You gotta get that basic struggle um and survival out. But see, there's a level of gratitude that you can have while you're doing that that's the mm. thing that i'm trying to say our biggest problem with as human beings is our ability to compare and and social media only made that shit harder 10 times worse so it's like you constantly being reminded of all the shit you do not have mm. that's really all social media does all day it just reminds you of what you don't have never remind you of what you do have you know what i'm saying and anytime it's something that you do have it's to it's funny is to put it on there so someone else below you mm. can admire what you got. And then you admire what this person got. It's like a pyramid of people trying to figure out how to fucking uh, co- compare themselves to this, that. Yo, comparison is it, the devil, B. Yeah, it is. Comparison, because a nigga could be lying. Man, nigga, you think do about, be lying. Think <laughs> about the girl, the 13 year old girl that goes and sees. I'm not going to say no names because a lot of people, I'm cool with a lot of people. So just. It's this cool. You can tell the same. Say it. I'm going to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> they, this 13 year old girl that sees this celebrity person that has these things done to themselves and they're comparing their beauty to something that's not realistic or mm. something that costs a lot of money. And now they're going to school depressed like how I was when people used to make fun of me. But only is they not even getting made fun of. They just comparing themselves to something that they see mm. that's not even realistic. This was Photoshop. This was that. The the they took this little bit of fat off the side when they did this picture and that. that, that. Man, then you looking at yourself like you ain't shit. Like that's starting at a young age. You mm. know what I'm saying? So it's it's just like man, it's, that's so crazy. Cause like even Instagram, I don't even call it Instagram anymore. I call it like the app of like instant gratification. I just, <laughs> yeah, right yeah. because it's like that's you real. S- you see something right, or you might for the random person that don't know me, they might see an interview with IDK right. They like man, that nigga Jay he lit like bro. You have no idea. This took five years. <laughs> like, I, I work my ass off for this. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, even they look like your fans look at you like. Man, I'm trying to do that. It's like, bro, it took a lot to get here. Yeah, for sure. It took a lot to become IDK. This shit ain't become IDK overnight. Yeah, and I'm. I'm it was a lot of times when niggas didn't know. Literally, I, no, no for sure. Like, right, you right. Who, who is Jay? Yeah. I don't know. And what's funny is that's still like that. Mm. It's just different. Like you know, I'm where I'm trying to get to the next level of my career. So to say that is like it's it's a revolving. Uh, what's you call door, it? Revolving door. door. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. so. So for me, it's like I'm just I don't know, man. I just I just like really look at life for really what it is. Mm. And a lot of us have a problem doing that. We don't look at life for what it, the fuck it actually truthfully is. Facts. And we see the results of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you just you uh you you dropped the uh you just dropped the video, the song um, the police song. Uh, yeah, Mr. Police. Mr. Police. Yeah. What what was what was going through your mind when you dropped this? When, when you even making this? Like I was I I was got pulled. I got the, I was driving. I left the studio session to go pick somebody up, and and I was in the, I was actually in the Maybach, but this is time it's a truck, and I'm driving it, and um the police literally got behind me. They didn't pull me over. They got behind me, mind you. I was on Facetime because that beat was in the session, the the first piano part of it, and I had an upright bass player. Um, in the, in the session, so I'm doing a session basically remotely, right. um, and and on my way to pick somebody up, and then they got behind me, and I was like, the first thing I would say if they pull me over is Mr. Police, how are you? And then no, I didn't. I ended up not even going to pick that person up. I turned the car right. They they didn't pull me over, so I just just turned the car right around when they got from behind me, went straight to the studio. I was like, oh, I got something, mm. and I thought of the concept of the video at that moment. Mm. So I was like, yo, the video could be like this, da 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 
And then we actually executed it and did the video exactly like how I said. If you explain that video to somebody or even a song, what does it mean? What, what? It's it's a, a fictional video about like something that really happens. So it's like, it's real. <laughs> it just didn't happen to me in that moment, but that is what it feels like in those situations, man. I know a lot of people that, it's police officers in certain neighborhoods know certain niggas first, last, middle name, where they gonna be at. They can continuously harass you. If you've gotten in trouble with them before, they assume you doing everything. I know that. So that's a depiction of that. Like, it don't matter if you're in a Toyota Corolla or a fucking Lamborghini. If you're a black man in society, you may have to deal with this. Or you've had to deal with that at least one time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm just putting that on Front Street for, because I know a lot of my audience it's like 50% black, 50% white. Uh, a lot of the white people don't know. They just like, oh man, you rap so good. It's so, your flow is so amazing. You're so on, nah, but, but, but bro, like now that you're listening, this, just know like this is, so when you see another black person, when they just know this is the life that niggas gotta live, like mm -hmm. understand that, it's, that's what it's about. That's what my music is about. That's what F65, the album I'm putting out, it's about having that conversation with people that are, you know, white people, for them to understand what life really truly is as a black man in America or a black person or even a person of color around the world, really, because Simple was more about a black man in America in this particular neighborhood. Right, exactly. This album is just about around the world from my lens. You know, it's still shit that I'm learning about a lot of different people, but this is a way to kind of had that dialogue and that conversation and it's working so far a lot of the white people are like oh my god you know this is like crazy like what you're doing is like i never looked at it this way you know mm. so i'm curious to know um you say you're single right when you when you did have a relationship i'm curious to know how was that how was that trans that communication right because like when i'm hearing you it's like you're always trying to fix a problem right we yeah, even yeah. in the beginning you're saying like there's problems i need to fix no nobel prize you feel me like I'm trying to fix problems. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these things you also speak on about like um, the scripture, uh, the serenity prayer, right? I got mm -hmm. it on my chest. Basically, God grant me the serenity to uh, accept the things I can't change, mm -hmm. the strength to change the things I can, but the wisdom to know the difference, mm -hmm. right? So you, you talk about just knowing things I can't, can and cannot change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with this police brutality thing and just like inequality around the world, mm -hmm. I don't want to be a pessimist saying we can't fix it, but it's been this way for so long. Right, and you say you're trying to have that conversation for white people to understand hey, what we have. Talk to me. That's you say so long. That's so subjective. Mm. Yo, the form of human being that we are is one million years old. The same nigga who discovered fire is using a fucking FaceTime. Like we, that same human being. Mm. So to me, it's not that long. It's just our problem is we want everything to be fixed in our lifetime. Mm. We want to see it, which is selfish. Mm. So at the end of the day, truthfully, we are making progress. If you think about, first of all, from the, the, the day the first slave, the last slave was freed till today, the amount of time that that's taken and where we are as black people, we're not at where we want to be. And I know we need to be further, but we did a hell of a job getting here this quick with all the adversities that we gotta overcome you know, doesn't mean that we can't do it faster. Doesn't mean that it shouldn't be faster. But we can't sit back and not have gratitude for what we've accomplished. Mm. We accomplished a lot of shit, bro. No, facts. Facts. And I, I open up with the, the girlfriend question because it's like we did accomplish. But trying to get another race or ethnicity group to understand what the fuck we go through is kind of like us trying to or a woman trying to explain to us how they feel when they in that menstrual cycle, right? And I ask this specifically because, like, one thing, because it's about women, is like, you know, they have the kids, so they feel like it's a certain things they can go through when they stay old, they should be able to feel, and we should allow them to feel that way, right? But as men, I feel like I constantly have a, a, a struggle of understanding that because I feel like as men, we think, we, we, we got this sense of we think logical, mm -hmm. right? And women don't. That's just the notion across the world against men and women, right? But it's always that disconnect between men and women. We, we can never really understand how they feel because we just not women. We don't have periods. We don't. We can't have yeah, bare 100%. kids. We're not going to understand. Same vice versa. We want our woman to understand 
what we going through, the, the time we got to put in, the work we got to put in to make us, but they can't understand. And when you said it about the black versus white conversation, I'm like, I'm curious to know, do you really think that they could ever understand what the fuck we going through? Yo, you know what our biggest, I think our biggest problem is people too. Tell us and me. this happens in relationships a lot. We always think everything is an on and off switch when really we're dealing with percentages. So what I, what I mean by that is un, to understand and to not understand is not a yes or no thing. It's a I understand to this extent. The more you explain, I could never understand 100% what it feels like to be a woman because I'm not a woman. Right. I don't live as a woman. But with understanding and, and or the willingness to understand and conversation and dialogue, I might understand 60% as opposed to 10% mm. now. I know that for sure because I didn't understand a lot of shit until I started talking to women and really listening to women. Mm. And then... I'm like, all right, I get it more and more and more and more. And it made me a better man by understanding and listening to women more. Mm. I can never get to 100%, right? We can agree on that. Just like I always say, you can't trust nobody 100%. There's only one person you can trust 100%. And it ain't your mom, it's mm. God. It's God, for sure. And your mom, maybe 99.9999999. But she is still a human being. Thanks. Mental health could, God forbid, uh, deteriorate and now she's doing shit she never you know what I mean you no, can't I'm with you. you can't trust nobody 100% but God I cannot be a woman so I can never 100% understand a woman but I think mm, two years ago three years ago I was at 30% I think I'm at 60 65 maybe even 70 mm. now it may end there and it may not get no more than that but I'm saying that to say if we could get even like white people or people who aren't like of color to 70, 80, 90%, maybe certain laws, things could change, maybe certain uh, conversations and dialogues will happen to create more love. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I'm really trying to say. That's you feel real. what I'm saying? No, that's real. Because the more you understand, right, makes the more you want to understand. And the more you want to understand changes the decisions you make. Exactly. Right? So, like, that's, I mean, exactly. you're right. Exactly. Because, like, exactly. my my arguments with my girl ain't the same now, like, that yeah. it was five then years ago. it was ago. right, right. Because it's right. like, you know what? I understand at this moment time, I might need to just exit myself out of the room. Or I right. might need to be more compassionate. I might need to chill more. I might need to shut the fuck up. Right, right. But at right, first right, right. I was trying to go against it, like, man, nah, you got you can't talk to nah, me like that. Cause yeah, I don't yeah, talk yeah, to you yeah, like, bro, yeah, it ain't yeah. like that. It don't work like that. That's what I'm saying. It's so it's so complex. <laughs> Back to the beginning of what we said, bro. The misunderstanding of being a Gemini. But the greatest thing about us is our attention to detail. So when you look at a thing and, and you generalize it as an on and off switch, you do or you don't, that will never work. Mm -mm. But when you start thinking of it as a percentage, now it starts to make way more sense. And now it's about how do you get somebody at least to 60%, 70%. It sounds like like when you say on and off switch, because like, I say this, like I don't believe that people should be black and white, even though I'm black and white sometimes. And mm -hmm. I say that because I feel like the gray area is what make us human, 100%, 100%. right? Think about it, like when you call and you got an answer machine or a voice message, that's black and white. Or you look at laws and things like that, it's like, okay, you don't meet this qualification, so you cannot get in this, mm -hmm. right? Because you did this, you gotta do this, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at gray area, that's what humans are. Mm -hmm. We look at the, it's circumstantial. Okay, he did this, but it was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Let me look at the reason. If the reason makes, if it makes sense, then we can make some things work. But mm -hmm. a computer, is either yes or oh, no, right? Black exactly. or white. So exactly. like, I, I get what you're saying. That's, exactly. that's that's crazy. Yeah, no, and uh, that's what I'm saying. So like, in our in our effort to just be better people, better men, all of these things that we're trying to accomplish, just always remember, bro. Like, and and I'm sorry that the experience was what it was. Oh, we good. That's I we, I know that, but that made it better. But I like anything. I like to hear that because now I could be more conscious of how things could come off. Mm. And then hopefully somebody could see this podcast because I feel like I'm going to be speaking for a lot of artists or people that may just be busy in general when it, when it comes to this. Like, I am very much so, like, happy we had that conversation for everyone else to see and then for even me to see your side of things and you to see my side of no, things. For sure. Feel me? I think, I, Respect. I think these conversations um, are super important because people got to want to understand that everything ain't about you. Yeah, yeah. Right, it just yeah. is what it is. Right, yeah, and like, yeah. as I had to say this to myself, like as as 
I understand now, of course, because I'm interviewing different people and the, the quality of individual I'm interviewing is way different, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But even with that comes with a, a certain type of person that's in my DM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Think mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's, it's a couple people in my DM that ain't getting answered. Yeah, exactly. And I got to be real with myself mm -hmm, and to look mm -hmm, in the mirror and be like, bro, how the fuck are you going to judge a nigga for not wanting to do it? And it might not make sense. You might not be lit enough yet. Mm -hmm, and that's cool because it's somebody in your DM who ain't lit enough yet, and if you told them that, they probably wouldn't want to hear that. They yeah, feel the same yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nah, somebody right now, like, that nigga Jay Hill ain't, he's a bitch, man. <laughs> fuck that nigga. <laughs> that nigga ain't I, I respect that, man. Nah, already, it's all love, nigga. That's, that's, it's all love, man. Yeah, so the yeah. difference, you would say, different between Simple City is, because that was the last one, it was a use. Mm, simple, yeah. Simple was the last one, right? Simple City, and the name of this one is, remind me. Uh, F65. F65 is, Simple was through the lens of somebody in that environment, yeah, in right. Environment. F sixty five is is basically trying to build an understanding right. from different perspectives. Yeah, well, it was really just a broader thing of not just one neighborhood, not just the hood, just black people or people of color in general throughout the world. Mm. Yeah, and you think this message is being conveyed? Well, I'll do the best I can if mm. people listen to it, and that's what they decide. That's on them. I'm doing the work from the best way that I can, from the skill set that I have. Mm. I cannot control, I know somebody's gonna hear me out. And that's the one thing I can sleep well at night knowing that I built my career to the point where somebody will understand. Mm. But uh, whether the whole entire world will, that's up to God and, and that has nothing to do with me. I just do the best I can to be the vessel and tap in the way that I need to, mm. you know? All right, I'm, I'm wrapping it up, bro, I promise. Another yeah. fan question, do you feel like, um? You finally, well, you might have answered, like you got over that hump. Because I feel like at one point in time, you did want to prove to niggas, I could rap. Oh, and I can yeah. rap better than all you niggas. Mm -hmm. Like you finally got over that hump. Yeah, you see what I'm rapping about now. It's a lot of niggas that rap about rap. It's like you literally rapping about, I'm the best MC and I need the need. And I'm like, I don't, that's not what I'm here for, bro. Mm -hmm. like, I did that. I did that, bro. Like that's cool and shit. Like, I. How am I going to inspire this this nigga who's trying to be like me one day? How am I going to inspire this woman to know more about what it feels like to be a black man? Mm. How am I going to inspire these people, these white people, to listen to our story more? That's the accomplishment. That's the skill for me. Mm. Rapping about rap, I'm kind of done with that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, are you seeing that? You seeing people like really acknowledge that? Because I feel like yeah. people always knew you could rap. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but people don't. It's it's, it's weird, right? Um, Cause people always can like J Cole, right? In the early stages, people would acknowledge that he could rap. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar, J Electronica, mm -hmm. um, shit. Even like go back to out DMV, um, Corday, YBN mm -hmm. Corday, right? Like people can acknowledge that these guys rap, but it might not be their type of music. Uh, it's funny. I was having a conversation with Drake, and I was like, "Bro, bro this nigga's wildin'. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he's drunk. Nah, he's but it's funny though. I was talking to Drake, bro. Nah, I was having a conversation. I was like, "I really love what I fuck with about you is you know how to say." complex shit in a simple way and that's not easy mm. so that's an uh, arts in itself there's different arts within the art there's the technical rap thing but then there's the art within the art and his art is saying complex shit simply right my art is saying whatever the fuck i'm saying that ties back to something that you need to know mm. you get what i'm saying that's my art and only certain people can really acknowledge that and and appreciate that you know so for me, it's really measured against what I feel. How I'm, like I like like I got a song with uh, Saucy Santana. I think he did. I saw that. I was curious. Yeah, yeah, it's fire. But he he did the, he did his verse, and and how for me, I'm measuring him about uh uh up against how well did he do Saucy Santana? That's his skill set. Not what bar did he say. That's not how I'm looking at it. And that's what how I good, you. who did them the best? Mm -hmm. I did me pretty well. S Saucy did him really well. Juicy, for who's also on the song, did her shit. You get what I'm saying? Luckily, I made the beat too, so I got a one up on everybody. <laughs> but like, it, it, but because like, like, I think Saucy and them did them even better than I did me. They might well, get to, you, you know what I mean? Why you just jump out there and get Saucy Santana? People, you, ain't, you ain't think people's gonna have questions about that? They can have questions, that's fine. Mm. I grew up in PG County, Maryland, and nigga was homophobic, like that's what we was taught. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know? So to me, that's a 
a level of growth, Facts. the next step of being a man, hey. not feeling uncomfortable, having that, and he made sense for the song. I get it. It it makes sense. I understand. And he gonna bring the ladies. Facts. Nigga, I did an interview that with- That song uh, ain't for niggas. <laughs> I did an interview with a dude, uh, Cliff Vermeer. He's like a gay guy, like, but he dressed like a woman. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it. It's growth, nigga. Like, yeah. <laughs> like this is growth. And when I hey, brought a see different that. audience, niggas fuck with it too. I'm yeah. like, yeah, they gonna watch it. It's gonna bring the money in. Nah, for sure. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure there'll be people ignorant and be like, man, this, this nigga gay and da da I mean, that doesn't bother me because I know what it is. Facts. You know what I mean? Your bitch probably in my DM right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that you can't see it, bro. Yeah, I can, I can I guess say that. So. Like, I, ain't, you know? I ain't that lit yet, so I'm taking a <laughs> I'm saying all the ignorant shit. Like, yeah, you feel yeah. me? Like, I feel it. Nobody can meet me at this time. Like, fuck y'all. Like, yeah. It's my shit. Yeah. But, uh, no, so, yo, do you, do you, are you in the DMV a lot now still? Nah, I don't like being back home, man. Are you getting, do you feel any, because I got to talk to you about back pe- home. I love the people, but the feeling don't feel right. Mm. It's too dangerous. It's too many people that want what you got. Facts. And although I see the love, I just feel, I don't know who's who all the way, all the time. So I don't really like to be back home like that. Do you hear whispers? I don't know, because again, I'm, as close as we are, Baltimore DMV, yeah. we are so far apart, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, So I, I'm just, I'm curious. Again, this is just fan shit I'm curious about. Do you, uh... Do you hear the whispers of like, you know how niggas get money, they change. Like, that nigga didn't come back to the hood. He ain't, he ain't giving back to the neighborhood. Do you hear that? I'm curious. I, I don't know. This could be a nigga, thing. I don't know. The shit I be doing is so next level. The way I give back. Yeah, you did do like say, a, uh, a basket. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. You did some crazy nigga shit. Nigga a whole basketball court. <laughs> yeah, you free did. cookout. Perform like yeah, 3,000 people. Nah, bro. I don't want to hear shit, nigga. I do that <laughs> shit every year. I be spending my own money. All kinds of shit, nigga. Like, uh, we just did something in my old high school. I brought, I did shirts with Nike, Duval Tiger t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? We gave shoes out. I came to speak. Like, I I come back. Mm. It's just, I don't stay there. Like, I'm not okay. about to be there for, like, two months. I got a crib out there, all that shit. But, like, nah. Mm. If I'm there, it's because I am giving back. That's why I'm back. So you feel like you get the love you deserve? In the, like, um, Yeah, man. I, You know, I, who am I to say what love I deserve? The people choose that. Mm. I feel loved, and I'm happy for that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But the people choose what I deserve and what I don't deserve. Mm. You know what I mean? I fuck with it. Yeah. Hey, man, let the people know how to follow you and all that. It's really simple. Yeah, it's, I got the easiest Instagram in the world. It's just IDK. That's how you know a nigga really famous, bro. <laughs> or, or rich, either one. Like, <laughs> he really get, that shit had to be taken at one point in time. Uh, I, you know, they don't let you make three-letter joints, so... It wasn't taken. Is they just made it. He is wild. <laughs> What's I up mean, with this hey, guy? You gotta relax. Truth. It's the truth. All right, go ahead. Let's set the story up. Yeah, no, they just, I just was, you know, I, was, I wanted the name. It was J underscore IDK at first. And I was like, I'm changing my name to IDK. You know, uh, I think they submitted, publicists submitted. And then one day it just changed. I didn't even know it was changing. It changed on Twitter and uh, Instagram. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I mean, since we've having fun, fuck it. Who out of that 2018 XXL? Uh, freshman list. That's like that's not doing nothing now. That you really could have <sighs> took spot. Nah, I ain't gonna do that to nobody. But what's funny is I did the Trippy Red freestyle. That's actually one of my good friends. We got like four or five Trippie songs. Trippy Red still going hard. I ain't yeah, 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 yeah. Who ain't really? No, no. Who, bring up the list. Who won the list? I, I'll uh, say it. You can't yeah, say it. Yeah, let me it. see. Let me see. Two thousand. Like it was two thousand eighteen, right? right um, uh, what was it? Freshman class. Let's see. I'm gonna make it really hard for people to want to interview with me, but fuck it. All right, you got. Let's see. Oh man, yeah, I got a video on my shit. Anybody get it before me? Let me know. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm supposed to be me, somebody in a little bit, but we good. Oh no, we about to we about to slide, slow slide, slide. Double XL, 2018 freshman cover. Yeah, let's see. I probably I bet you I won't know these niggas if I look them in their face. All right. We got. I think this. Perp, right? Smoke Perp. Smoke oh, perp. man. Damn, I ain't heard from him in a minute. He cool, though, man. Don't do my man dirty or nothing. He cool. He he, he a cool dude. He, you know what I'm saying? I just ain't heard from him in a minute. But he, <laughs> I ain't say shit. Cool you dude. said everything. Nah, but you said the name first. <laughs> so I thought you was trying to say something. You know what I mean? Nah, 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 nah. Denzel Carey, you fuck with him. All right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had, wait, where's Khalifa? Was on this nah. That's I'm about to say, what the 2010. Fuck? Okay, okay, I'm looking at something else. See, I don't even know these people. I, I know it's this Don chick. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, let me not. Let me not make it bad for myself. 
This was the shit you supposed to been on. That's the the shit you made the uh, the rap about. Yeah, but you know, supposed to. I would have loved to at that time, but I thought, wow, you know, that shit. You just gotta look at the shit you doing <laughs> and be like, man. I fuck cool. with you, bro. I was just trying to. I was just, I'll cool. fuck with you. I fuck with you. Nah, Yo, for real. IDK J Hill J Hill podcast. This is rap, man. Good shit, bro. I appreciate sure. you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. it. That was good, man.